If you want to hold your breath for a long time, it's all about managing two things, carbon dioxide tolerance and oxygen saturation. We'll be discussing both of those things today. But first, if you're new to this channel, uh, don't forget to punch that subscribe button. Extended breath holding is partly about willpower and partly biohacking. And the benefits of increasing your breath holding ability will carry over into other areas like endurance sports, uh, which I discuss in a different video. This video also assumes that you've already found a uh, breath holding technique, such as the Wim Hof method or the David Blaine breathing technique. David Blaine is the one you want to use if you're going for really long breath hold times. And there's a link to a video on how to do that just right up here. But uh, as you hold your breath, two things happen. Blood carbon dioxide levels increase and blood oxygen levels decrease. Those are both limiting factors. If your CO2 levels get too high, you will feel compelled to take a breath. If oxygen levels get too low, uh, you'll, you'll pass out. And from what I understand, I believe you have to actually be conscious if you want to count your personal breath holding record. So breath holding is all about managing those two aspects of blood chemistry, oxygen and carbon dioxide. How you train for a breath hold will depend on which of those two things is your limiting factor. We'll talk about carbon dioxide management first because that's the limiting variable for most people. Most people eventually give in and take a breath rather than passing out. That's, that's how you know that CO2 is your limiting factor. You may have been taught in school that we have five senses. Well, some scientists put that number at 20 or higher. One of those senses is the ability to sense blood carbon dioxide concentration. When you hold your breath, you know that feeling you get that tells you that it's, it's time to take another breath? That's what you're feeling. You're, you're sensing blood carbon dioxide buildup. And your body regulates that pretty closely. In case you're curious, it tries to keep the carbon dioxide concentration at a, a partial pressure of about 40 millimeters of mercury. That part's not really important. What's important is to recognize that there's a specific carbon dioxide threshold that your body is trying to maintain. If your carbon dioxide levels get higher than that, it will cause you to breathe more as a way of purging out the CO2. If it drops below that, then you won't breathe as much and it'll drift back up. Carbon dioxide is created within you when your body burns fuel. That's why when you work out hard, you have to breathe a lot harder. Your body is reacting to the rising CO2 levels and it makes you breathe to, to purge out CO2 and, and get back to your, to your set point level. So if you want to get used to higher carbon dioxide levels, what you do is you hold your breath and then you do something strenuous. Now make sure you're safe. So for example, um, I could go out in the backyard and, and hold my breath and walk for a while. It's, it's a nice soft grass yard. If I pass out, then I'll, I'll land on the grass and I'm not too worried about it. Um, or I could sit in a chair and you know, just do things with my hands or I could do curls or I mean, whatever you want to do. Just make sure you're safe about doing it. And then resist breathing for as long as you can. And then when you finally do start breathing, maintain a breath deficit for as long as you can. Go for five or 10 minutes feeling like you're not breathing as much as you'd like to. Over time doing this, you become comfortable with higher levels of blood CO2. It usually takes a few weeks of, of practice to noticeably increase your CO2 threshold. The second part of CO2 management is limiting how much CO2 you generate, uh, specifically while you're holding your breath. So when you're going for your personal breath holding record, you want to be probably laying down like a rag doll with your eyes shut. Um, digestion burns calories, so you probably don't want to have eaten anything for a while when you, when you go for the record. My personal record, which is currently about five and a half minutes, I sat early one morning, I had just woken up, hadn't even gotten out of bed yet, hadn't eaten anything for at least 12 hours, and so I was burning very little CO2 at the time. And as a result, it took a lot longer for me to feel like I had to take that breath. David Blaine took it even a step further. Uh, he lost 50 pounds of body mass. He recognized that body mass, even at rest, burns energy, consumes calories. And so he lost 50 pounds so that he could go after the world record. The, the sad part about that is that fat doesn't 
burn much energy and so if you want the weight loss to count you actually have to lose muscle mass you know what i you're gonna have to make the decision yourself to determine whether losing muscle mass is worth it to be able to hold your breath longer in my case i i don't go that far second variable is oxygen oxygen management really isn't very complicated you saturate with oxygen and then you burn through it as slowly as possible and when you run out you pass out um, I made another video that you can check out here. It's, it's me holding my breath while wearing a, a pulse oximeter measuring my oxygen levels. And what, what you'll notice is my oxygen levels stay constant, fairly high, saturated, for a minute or two and then they start to drop right off. And once oxygen levels drop, your skin begins to turn gray and eventually you will pass out if you don't breathe. Then, but once you pass out, you do start breathing again. So I mean. One common question is whether you have to worry about safety or brain damage. And the short answer is no. The brain has to be without oxygen, without oxygen, for several minutes before any damage is done. So you would have to be passed out for several minutes without breathing in order for there to be any risk of brain damage. If you start breathing though, what that means is that your limiting factor is your CO2 comfort level. If you pass out, it means your limiting factor is oxygen. David Blaine talked about passing out 20 plus times while he was training. So what that tells you is he had gotten to the point where CO2 didn't bother him anymore. He was able to just fight through it and hold his breath until he passed out. When he went for the record, he inhaled pure oxygen for a while so that he was fully saturated with oxygen and it took him 17 plus minutes before he was on the verge of blacking out. So in summary, if you want to increase your breath hold, Take some time to increase your CO2 tolerance. Then, early some morning before you eat breakfast or done anything else, go for your record. Follow the breathing exercises shown in that David Blaine breathing technique video. And then just lay there like a rag doll with your eyes shut and think about taxes or baseball scores or whatever. And then post and let me know how, how long you're able to go. Thanks.